Today we're going to be having a look at two members of the M5 range, the M5 Stack Core 2 and the M5 Stack C+. These are feature-rich ESP32 based development boards, which enable you to develop and prototype your own projects and IoT devices without a significant learning curve. These devices both have colored displays, with the Core 2 being a touchscreen as well. They also have some additional buttons, built-in batteries, I.O. headers and a range of sensors. These were sent to me by Banggood to share with you. I'll put links to them in the video description if you'd like to get your own. Let's open up the M5 Stick C Plus first and take a look at that. I'll start off by saying that this device is really small for what it's able to do. It's a little bit bigger than an Arduino Nano and obviously a bit thicker to accommodate the sensors and battery, so it's quite impressive what they've managed to fit into it. It's got a 1.1 inch TFT display with two customizable buttons and a power button. It's got an I.O. expansion port at the top and a growth connector on the bottom to add devices and sensors. This USB-C port is used to charge and program it. In addition to all of these on the outside, the stick also has a built-in LED, a buzzer, a 6-axis MPU, IR transmitter, microphone and a real-time clock. It also has both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. So this is a really powerful little device. Next let's open up the M5 Stack Core 2. This is an upgrade to the original M5 Stack Core. The Core 2 has a large 2 inch display which is also a touchscreen. It also has 3 capacitive touch buttons below the display which replace the physical buttons on the original Core. We then have 2 buttons on the sides, one for power and one to reset the device. We also have a USB-C port, growth connector and a micro SD card slot. Under the case we've got an LED, microphone, vibration motor, speaker, 6-axis MPU and real-time clock. This cover on the back hides the 30-pin header socket which allows you to access a range of I.O. and communication pins which are detailed in the diagram alongside it. This port also allows you to plug in other modules to build a stack, which is where the device gets its name. The Core 2 also comes with a basic preloaded program, which allows you to explore some of the features and sensors on the device. It's also got magnetic feet, so you can easily stick it onto a whiteboard or your fridge as a control panel or dashboard. Next let's have a look at how to program them. The boards are compatible with the Arduino IDE, but are a bit easier to work with using MicroPython. The preferred method is to use a web-based application called UIFlow. To make use of this application, we need to first install a driver on our computer and then flash the UIFlow firmware to the device using M5 Burner. This enables it to communicate with the web application. You can also burn a couple of other pre-made programs to each device directly from the M5 Burner tool. We're going to burn the latest version of UIFlow to both the core and stick devices. One of the best features of UIFlow is that it's able to be used wirelessly. The device connects to your Wi-Fi network and generates an API key, and you can then program the device from your browser without any cables. This sounded to me like it had the potential to be buggy and slow, but I've been really impressed with how well this works. I've used it to load a number of programs and revisions and I've never had any communication problems. It also uploads the code to the device really quickly, usually well under 5 seconds. UIFlow is an intuitive drag and drop block coding IDE, which makes it really easy to get basic programs up and running. You can also switch between block and Python modes to add functionality or edit the actual code being generated. We can literally make up a program and have it running on the device in a couple of minutes. Here I just made a button to drive the internal vibration motor when it's pushed. When you click on upload or run, the device receives the code from the IDE and starts running it.
Next I wanted to try making a program which used some of the I/O pins, so I decided to try and make a basic home automation control panel using a relay board. I dropped in four slider switches to drive a relay for each room, and then added some digital I/O blocks to set each pin high or low depending on the state of the button. Again, this whole program took around 5 minutes to make and get ready to upload to the device. I then plugged the relay module into the I/O pins and uploaded the code to the core too. It looks like it's all working the way it should. You can also turn on multiple rooms at once. I didn't want to plug in all 8 relays at once as I'm not sure yet what the Core 2's power supply capacity is, and this was being driven straight from the Core 2's 5V supply. Next let's look at running a program on the M5 Stick C+. The whole process is fairly similar, it's just a matter of selecting a different device in the M5 burner tool and then in UI Flow. We'll start by creating a program to display the X and Y coordinates from an external joystick. It's obviously not scaled correctly, but it still works pretty well. We can also replace the joystick with a sensor like the soil moisture sensor, and modify the program to display the soil moisture level. We'll also add a battery voltage indicator on the display. So we've now got a basic soil moisture level being displayed on our M5 stick. If you'd like to try building any of these basic projects for yourself, I'll put links to the components in the video description. As mentioned before, I'll also add links to the M5 Stack Core 2 and Stick C Plus from Banggood. Let me know what you think of these two devices and UI flow in the comment section. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.